Hi, Obi. Um, thanks for your email, and I thought I'd just respond to your questions by uh, making a video because it's easier in some ways just to talk than to type. <laughs> and also the human element comes through. So um, what else do I want to say about that? You got a couple of questions here. And uh, should I focus all my attention exclusively on Golang? Will I be better off ignoring other programming languages? I ask this because the other languages seem to dominate the job market out here. Uh, do you see this changing in the future in, uh, in my country's web development land landscape, in Nigeria's web development lands landscape? I can't speak for the web development landscape in Nigeria, but I imagine that Nigeria follows the tech evolution curve maybe they trail a little bit but i think the world's getting smaller and smaller that uh that trailing that lag is less and less that's just my speculation and so go the go programming language is currently the highest paying programming language in america and uh, go is a super solid language has amazing credentials is created by Google and geniuses. <laughs> Rob Pike, Ken Thompson, Robert Gressmer. If you know me, you've heard me say this before. And, uh, you know, these are the same people that created the C programming language, the B programming language, Unix, UTF-8. And I'm leaving something out because it's late. I'm tired. C, Unix, UTF-8. That's it. They, they created all those things. It's huge. And so Go is getting a lot of market traction. It was released version 1, March of 2012. So it's been out about five years and uh, currently the highest paying programming language to know in America for a reason. It's got huge industry adoption. And so that's just going to continue. And if you learn Go, it's a language you could know for a long time and do well with it. And so I really strongly, without reservation or hesitation, recommend to people, man, learn the Go programming language. It'll, it'll do you right. <laughs> it'll be fine. So that's my first thought. On that, realistically, what are my prospects being hired as a remote Go developer due to my location? Most job boards I casually scan through seem to favor European and North American developers a lot. Am I going to be properly positioned to compete in this job space with Go under my belt? So um, if you know how to code, I think that ultimately, you know, programming is one of those places where you're judged uh, by merit. It's a merit meritocracy. And, uh, and if you could do something and do something well, then people will be interested in working with you. And you just have to prove to them that, you know, there's a way that you can work together and have a good relationship and you have to find them. So, you know, um, networking online and the Go community is small enough. That's another great thing that, you know, you could, you know, help get yourself known by answering Stack Overflow questions and the Go Lang Bridge Forum. You could also go into the GoLang Bridge forum and then just start to get to know people online. And, you know, myself and Brian Kettleson and Bill Kennedy. And, you know, just look at the people that I follow. <laughs> you know, I only follow less than 100 people. And then also check out, I have a list of teachers on Twitter, you know, of Go teachers. And just like start to connect with those people like you've connected with me. And uh, you'll develop relationships and then those people will connect you. So I think it's totally feasible for you, but the building the relationship part is really important. So on Twitter, just connect with those other instructors and keep learning it and get good at it and keep coding in it, and uh, you could get there. As a freelance work, do you recommend it when I'm confident enough with my dev skills, or should I just focus all my attention towards looking for that remote work that fits my taste? Yeah, so just code as much as you can code when you can code, and some of that will be doing freelance open source work. And, uh, and then eventually, hopefully, that'll lead to a job. How do you handle days of depression, especially in this coding journey? As a stay-at-home dad learning to code with kids distracting all the time, I get worried that I'm not learning fast enough to begin to earn for my family. As I type now, I'm carrying my younger daughter with the elder one pulling at my shirt from all sides. It's crazy most times for me, truly. I would greatly appreciate your response, especially as this will be my first time asking for career advice on the web development path. Yeah, you know, family is, uh, it's like the crucible <laughs> and, uh, it's the, it's the, um, forge. A forge is where iron is forged and it has the fire and it's the forge. And it's really where as individuals, I believe that our metal, you know, you know, the impurities can get burned out of us 
and it, it can make us stronger and better and more pure. <laughs> but the process is one of burning. And, um, and it's, uh, it's great spiritual work, which is why I use the word crucible, being a parent, because it really brings you to, you know, everything gets, it gets condensed and pressurized and you have less time and the stakes are higher. And every moment you spend working is a moment you can't be with your kids. And, and then, you know, and then kids are just learning themselves and they're, they don't even know how to emotion, understand or regulate some of their emotions yet. And they are freaking out and screaming and crying because, <laughs> you know, they really wanted the butterfly that was on the fence that flew away and they're having a huge emotional breakdown because of it. Or, you know, they're, they're hitting and fighting each other, you know, and so, um, it could be an incredibly demanding thing to, uh, to, to have kids and then also, you know, you need to provide for your family. And so the stakes go way up and I totally feel you as a father about how um, the pressure to provide for your family at the same time you want to be with your family. And so I think that just creating some structure in one's life that you need to carve out a certain amount of time every day to do work that does earn money so you can provide for your family and then to do some work that allows you to push the ball forward and so for me, in my life, there's three things. <laughs> there's family, there's work, and then there's personal maintenance. That's it. And so personal maintenance includes eating, sleeping, <laughs> showering, all that stuff. Eat, sleep, you know, and exercise. And, uh, and so it's, it's family, work, personal maintenance. That's it. And so it's all always a balance of that. And I was just talking with a friend tonight. And he's like, dude, I've been like, he's been, he's, he's actually, you know, um, he's a foreign exchange student, but I consider him a friend and he's been living with us for five or six weeks this summer. He's like, I've been here for like four or five weeks and I haven't seen you relax once. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, man, I inside myself, I don't know how to relax. I don't, I don't know how to relax anymore. And it's just, I don't know if I ever did. I've always been a pretty full on, intense, passionate person, but now it's like, man, it's full on. And so how do you deal with that depression? I think that, you know, for a large portion of my life, I was depressed and anxious and, um, I had a hard childhood. And so that really kind of tail spun me and I was able to, I was able to pull out of that tail spin and, and not auger in <laughs> as pilots say. And I don't, I don't feel depressed and anxious on, on, uh, most days, sometimes, you know, um, my perspective shifts a little bit and I could get a little bit like, um, man, it, it's could be, it could be a hard thing, but you got to look at those challenges and everything is the choice of how you choose to see things and the choice of how you choose to, which actions to take. And so there are challenges which are wanting solutions. And so just look at the challenges and find the solutions and do the work. And, um, and just keep telling yourself the positive things and tell other people the positive things and tell it to yourself and tell it to others until you believe it. Don't fall into the trap of whining and complaining, right? Don't whine, find solutions. <laughs> That's like one of my sayings, don't whine, find solutions. And so see it all as challenges, wonderful challenges. And you're the hero of this ep ep epic journey and, uh, and face those challenges and work hard to find solutions. And don't whine, find solutions. And so for me, that really helps just realizing I have a choice and I get to choose how I approach every moment and how I face whatever I'm facing. And stress and depression and frustration all come from this, this gap between where you are and where um, you wish you were. And when you look at where you wish you were, that creates stress and that creates depression and pressure. And so just don't look at where you wish you were. Like set your goal. I want to get to that mountain and then look down to where you are. Look to where you are. And what do I need to do today? And which steps do I need to take? And what is good about my life today? So making that choice to see things in a positive way and to tell other people positive things and, uh, and to value what you have um, because, um, it, you know, it's not always going to be there, man. You've been given the gift of life. We've all been given the gift of life. It's fleeting. It's temporary. It's transient. It's not going to last. 
And so even right now, like how wonderful, how wonderful, amazing. I get to make a video and communicate with somebody on the other side of the world. Amazing. And, uh, you know, <laughs> just looking around my pantry, man, so much to be thankful for. I got my health, got my family, my kids, and it's easy to forget sometimes. I always have to remind myself every day, and um, and it's a choice. So, mm, exercise could also help, depending upon how hard your depression is, how big it is. Like, just force yourself to exercise every day till you get a really hard sweat and and cardiovascular high high pulse rate for you know 30 minutes. Do that every day. That will help with exercise and eat well. Eat well, exercise, get your sleep. You know, and you can only do what you can do. And so be easy on yourself and don't wish that you were doing more, that your life is more, that you were in some other place. Appreciate the place you're in. So those are, those are, those are my words and that's why I wanted to record this as a video because that's a whole hell of a lot to type out and I want to come across the same. So I, I wish you well, Obi, and everybody else out there in the world who may have found this. And we're all in this together. And so the, the more we help each other, the more, the more we all do better together. <laughs> I have that saying, together we all succeed. And I really believe it. So just reach out to people, Obi. Keep reaching out to people. And whoever else might be watching this, just reach out. And the GO community is a super friendly community by design. It's like they have guidelines for the GO community. And, uh, and it's designed to be you know friendly and embracing and accepting. And I, I totally love that about it. So uh, reach out to the people, look on my Twitter account for, you know, other Go teachers and just start developing relationships with them and code as much as you can code. And that's all you can do. And also work every day to make the money that you can make, whatever you're doing to support your family, but keep working towards that future goal where you'd like to be. All right, my friend, hope this finds you well.